Hello and welcome to the California Drought Update for July 2024. We'll begin today's episode with a status update on California's largest reservoirs. All of the state's large reservoirs are now facing water level declines, but are they still above the historical average? Next up, we'll do a quick update on some interesting things happening over at Lake Tahoe. Then we take a look at how wildfires not only interrupt visits to the reservoirs, but they can also impact dam operations. And finally, a quick update on the drought situation in California. There's a lot to discuss, but before we get started, please hit that like button. Tell me off in the comments section. This is Time Bomb. Let's get started. We start as usual with California's largest reservoir, Lake Shasta, which is located in Shasta County in Northern California. The current water elevation is 1,048 feet. That's just below 88% of full pool capacity and 113% of its historical average. The water level decline has picked up pace in the last week and is now declining at a rate of over eight inches a day. Now let's head 100 miles south to Butte County and California's second largest reservoir, Lake Oroville. The water elevation at Oroville is currently 889 feet or 96% of its full pool capacity. That's 126% of its historical average for this time of year. Warmer temperatures have arrived in Northern California and snowmelt runoff into Lake Oroville has significantly dwindled. At this point, outflows from Lake Oroville are exceeding inflows. Releases from Lake Oroville's main spillway ended in late May and now otter all water is being released through the Edward Hyatt power plant. The Department of Water Resources issued a warning that when the main spillway is not in use, water may still be seen in the main spillway outlet as the seals in the eight radial gates are not designed to be watertight. The gate seals do not play a role in the structural integrity of the, of the gates, which continue to operate as intended. You will only see this kind of trickle of water in the main spillway when water levels are very high. You may also notice some water in the emergency spillway, but this is by design. When the emergency spillway was replaced after its failure in 2017, small drains were installed as part of the drainage and seepage control system. The point of these drains is for seepage control, but also for pressure relief. The drains help to relieve hydrostatic pressure that builds up behind the concrete slab of the spillway. By allowing water to escape, they reduce the risk of structural damage due to pressure buildup. So if you see some water flowing down Oroville spillways, it is all by design and not a cause for concern. Before we move on, I want to show you these two images of Lake Oroville. This one is from December of 2022, when the lake was at 29% of its total capacity. You can see the Enterprise Bridge there in the background. And this image is from just a few weeks ago. What a dramatic change two years of good snowpack can make. Now let's head back up north to California's third largest reservoir, Trinity Lake. Trinity Lake has had a remarkable recovery. Last year at this time, Trinity Lake was at an elevation of 2,297 feet. That's only 58% of its full pool capacity. Even though Trinity Lake is located just 30 miles from Lake Shasta, they have completely different hydrological and meteorological conditions. So while Shasta was flush with water in 2023, Trinity Lake was still struggling with low water levels. But the 2024 winter season was generous, and today Trinity Lake is at an elevation of 2,344 feet, or 84% of its total capacity. That's 109% of the historical average. Located 130 miles east of Oakland is California's fourth largest reservoir, New Melones. The New Melones Reservoir is currently at an elevation of 1,053 feet. That's 84% of its capacity and 113% of its historical average for this time of year. And finally, located 60 miles southeast of San Jose is California's fifth largest reservoir, San Luis. The San Luis Reservoir, at an elevation of 453 feet, is lagging behind California's other large reservoirs at just 49% of its full pool capacity and 90% of its historical average. Lake Tahoe is a tiny reservoir compared to Lake Shasta and Oroville. 
but is famous worldwide for its, the clarity of its water and the beauty of the surrounding area. Lake Tahoe is located in the Sierra Nevada on the border between California and Nevada. The natural rim of Lake Tahoe is at an elevation of 6,223 feet. Above that level, water would flow out of the lake into the Truckee River. But back in 1913, a dam was built between the lake and the river, raising the full pool level by 6 feet to an elevation of 6,229 feet. Well, back in 2022, Lake Tahoe's water level dropped below the natural rim level of 6,223 feet. That came after three consecutive years of drought conditions across the state of California. But after two consecutive years of healthy snowpack, the water levels have risen. In late May, a U.S. Geological Survey gauge near the Lake Tahoe Dam showed a water level reading of 6,228.9 feet. That's just shy of the maximum allowed water level of 6,229 feet. That is the first time Lake Tahoe has reached full capacity since 2019. According to the Nevada Water Outlook Supply Report, the lake has enough water to meet demand for the next three years, even if the snowpacks are below normal. As the dry season begins in California, the state is bracing itself for another challenging wildfire season. With rising temperatures and decreasing humidity, the conditions are ripe for wildfires to ignite and spread rapidly. These wildfires can have a serious impact on California's reservoirs. While the fire is burning, it may prompt evacuations and interrupt the ability to visit the reservoirs. However, the real damage to reservoirs comes after the fire is contained. Wildfires can lead to an increased sediment, ash, and debris in the reservoirs, which can degrade water quality and damage hydropower generating equipment. Wildfires are a major cause of sediment. The erosion from soil from burned landscapes results in higher sediment loads entering the reservoirs. This sedimentation can reduce the storage capacity of reservoirs and impact flood control capabilities. In fact, just a few weeks ago, the total full pool capacity of Lake Oroville was reduced due to the large amount of sediment that's flowed into the lake over the years. Last week, the Department of Water Resources announced that Pyramid Lake and Castiac Lake, both located in Southern California, have closed after a wildfire came too close to them. The Post Fire, located in northwestern Los Angeles County, started on the 16th of June and burned more than 15,000 acres of land in Los Angeles and Ventura counties. Although the fire is now contained, it did cause both the Pyramid and Castiac Lakes to close to visitors, and dozens of campers had to evacuate. There was also a small fire named the Hidden Fire near Lake Shasta. Although this fire only burned a few hundred acres, it did prompt evacuations from areas along the shores of Lake Shasta. So as more wildfires are burning throughout the dry season in California, just be aware they can interrupt your ability to visit these lakes, and they also have a dramatic impact in how dam operators will manage these jams. Now let's check in on the drought situation in California. As of the current report from the U.S. Drought Monitor, exactly 2.82% of California is experiencing abnormally dry conditions. That covers about 4,463 square miles of California. There are currently no areas in California under official drought classifications. This represents a 130% change from the previous week with 1.21% or 1,920 square miles of the state was categorized as abnormally dry. The current drought situation is a vast improvement from just one year ago when 23.5% of California was experiencing abnormally dry conditions and 4.6% of the state was experiencing modern, moderate drought-like conditions. This significant improvement is due to recent rainfall and the snowpack levels, which have substantially alleviated drought conditions across the state. Hey, that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with another video next week. In the meantime, please consider watching some of my other videos and consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.